Hi, my name is Miles Berwick. I'm 37. I'm from Queens, New York. And I'm here for basically fix America, then fix the world. I am here due to the fact that I go to college upstate. Uh, my school has been having tuition increases every single year by 5% that do not help my school in any way, shape, or form. I think everybody deserves the same chance to get ahead. And again, when you fall down, when you, you need somebody to pick you up. It's as simple as that. And I think a lot of us are sort of using this platform to express other, uh, like to express other outrages. Like, uh, you know, as like a feminist, I'm using this platform to sort of discuss feminist issues. But I also think that like, um, it's, it's interesting to me that it really takes something like this with like, uh, with so, it takes so much for people to get outraged. Eventually, it will happen when people unify so strong that they will show the governments, not just here, but everywhere in the world, that they are pointless. We don't need them. We don't need to keep the rest. We don't need to have them resign. We ignore them. They have no function. They have nothing else to do. And if they try to pull the army, try pulling an army on 7 billion people, it's never going to happen. No, because people are going to sit and say... Well, there, would, there wouldn't be 7 million people. No, the army is part, part of the 99%. Yeah. Who wants to go and become somebody else's skin and food? I'm a big fan of the Venus Project, the life work of Jacques Fresco, and uh, I, I'm a big believer in moving towards a resource-based economy. Right, it's true. Humanity, know it's like all humans people. uniting, one human race in harmony with technology and Mother Nature. That's what the resource-based economy is about. Look it up, Venus Project. All honesty, they're actually cutting classes every year, um, and all the funds that I am paying out of my pocket are going to a, a president that is actually the president of two colleges being paid a half million dollars a year annually from my pocket. Um, after that, then I found that they are actually building off-site campus at other colleges. They are building more and more buildings while my school is lacking in class and education. This is already all over the news, every night. But every night when people from this occupation are interviewed about their demands, they don't have any demands. We don't stand for anything other than being angry. People feel like their voices don't matter, but here when they join an occupation, they do. So people are speaking up, and I think that when you have a whole nation, a world, whether this does anything or not in terms of like, you know, passing legislation or sort of trying to fix uh, the way that uh, big businesses are approaching government, I think that ultimately it's at least a sign that like there are people who are getting pissed off and like they have a voice and we have a voice and we will continue this until uh, until something happens. Then why have an elected official? You can prove right here and you're not an elected official. Nice. Well that's nice. right. And that underscores I believe that there is a country that's been doing exactly this for eight hundred years. Very successfully. Switzerland is the country. And they did never got rid of their parliament. They kept their parliament like we would want to keep our Congress so that you have, except it would be run like the U.S. Navy instead of the house of prostitution that it is now. I'm a college teacher. May I ask what, uh, what institution? Or? Uh, it's uh, it's close to college. I teach languages. I'm a linguist. I'm a professional linguist. I teach English composition. You know, I have freedom to talk to my students about whatever the hell I want to do. <laughs> so, uh, it was, it was literature. Uh, it's English, English writing, and also English is second language. I work for different departments, but it's all linguistics, where people have freedom to discuss and give the students a chance to talk about what they want to do. So what would you say to people that, uh, that would argue that capitalism is a part of what has gotten, to, gotten America to where it is today? Gotten it to the point where you're able to express these views, where in other countries you may not be able to? 
Um, I would say that um, the sort of, uh, first of all, I think that the idea of a lot of intrinsic American values of sort of things like freedom and liberty come from this like weird individualist perspective of uh, people as individuals should be uh, expressing themselves and sort of finding your own business and like I have my freedom and you have your freedom. Um, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm someone who, who I, I think that the idea of collectivism is much more important. So I'd first of all argue that a lot of our own values uh, are fundamentally corrupt, but I would say that even something to the degree, that, like to the degree that I have my freedom of speech, I don't really think that that's capitalism doing that. I think that that is um, that is uh, that is people working within a capitalist system to try to ensure us at least basic freedoms. I'm not sure that it's capitalism that's letting me stand here today. I think that capitalism is opposing me stand here. Today. Um, Marx, Marx, you said uh, capitalism shows the signs of its own destruction. Yep. So maybe capitalism brought us here, but capitalism is going to bring itself down. I mean, now we have all these like, internet outlets, and so many people have access to the internet, and that's arguably a capitalist product. And now, hello, Occupy Wall Street, come and organize on the internet. And yet, we need capitalism to get there, but ultimately, it's not a cell phone for failure. And that's Marx right there, and that's, that's the way that these systems, we have this constantly, constantly changing, and they're constantly, they're constantly working towards something, if you're a Marxist. These people do not represent the 99%. In fact, we represent more people than they do by working below our means and saving up, so that so that we don't claim entitlements to, to government to government handouts. We're not gonna we're not gonna claim that we deserve $20 minimum wage. We're gonna claim that we deserve what we work for. We're not gonna claim that we should get paid living wage just for living, just for existing. We're gonna we're gonna we're, we believe that we should get paid for working, and we're not gonna claim entitlements to, other, to anyone else. And we are here to represent all of those people, not this 99 whatever. That these people, that the Occupy Wall Street protesters are trying to argue. Our country was founded on capitalism and free market. That's how it became so prosperous. That's how it became the top country, and that's how we can help other countries is through our economic ideas. They want to go and wreck it by offering the ideas of the countries that we were trying to help out of this situation. Which is socialism. Yeah, we're absolutely families. We're not the one percent that they're claiming we are. We work, our families have worked away from the top, and we're all college students getting education, trying to make our way in life by honest labor. I mean, I've I've contracted the United States Army so that I can pay for my education. And at the same time, though, that doesn't mean that I think that we should just have some massive federal government that gives handouts to everybody. I don't expect it for free. I expect to do my duty for it. And the same thing with any other career. You have to work to get something. It should not just be handed to you if it was this country would never, ever succeed. Countries that only are entitlement and equal distribution have failed globally and historically forever. This country is built on capitalism. Capitalism works. Free economy works. It's a meritocracy, baby. Capitalism. Hey, I gotta ask, what's up with the cigars? We just like cigars. We love cigars. <laughs> we love cigars. Right on, right on. Alright, thanks. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. showing support and from that support people got involved personally with certain work groups and within those work groups we all have certain agendas that we just want to uh, make sure everybody's comfortable, healthy, informed and uh, knowledgeable about what's happening.